So are you introverted or are you extroverted? Now, this is a concept that I think so many people have adopted their entire lives, but I'm going to go over with you why I think people have it wrong in how they perceive this idea of, well, if I'm an introverted person, I will always be introverted. I can never be confident. And the people who are confident are always going to be confident. And, you know, it's impossible to go from one to the other. Well, most people, and I've kind of got this on my, my uh, I was going to say diagram. It's not really a diagram. It's kind of a chart here. But most people kind of think about introversion and extroversion as a scale. And you are somewhere on this particular scale in regards to your confidence and who you are personality wise. So as you can see, in fact, my first question to you is I want you to gauge on your own right now. How would you class your personality? Where would you fit yourself on the introvert, uh, the introversion and extroversion scale? Are you a shy person? Are you a confident person? Would you say you're somewhere kind of in the middle or in between? And I want you to imagine where you might be on this scale. Now, there's no right or wrong answer with this, but I think it's just a really good one just to kind of work out and in, in in how you feel about yourself and your own skin of like, am I a confident person? Am I a shy person? Could I be doing better here and there? You know, just it's just to get you to think about it. And I'm sure by now you've already got your answer. And I think for me, this idea first started was when I was introduced to Neil Strauss's book, The Game. You know, he was a, a guy, I think, in his uh, sort of like mid to late 30s. And he had just believed that he wasn't going to change. He was who he was. And that was that he was never going to be successful with women. And of course, him being taken under the wing of mystery and other dating coaches, you know, he has this like whirlwind adventure in his book. And I, OK, I'm, I'm preaching to the choir, so I don't need to certainly explain it too much. And if you haven't read it, then absolutely go and check it out. But one of the big takeaways that I got from that book all of those years ago was that no matter where you are in your life, you can change who you are and you can certainly be a better man. And one of the big elements of that was that Neil Strauss was a very shy, introverted guy with him being a journalist. Yes, he was around a lot of confident people, but he just wasn't confident in himself. And then through a lot of desensitization and exposure therapy to meeting and talking to lots of women, he became more confident. So it's an interesting thing, though, that people can read that, but still not uh, absorb that particular information and think, oh, well, if he can do it, I can do it. People always have a very easy uh, limiting belief that, oh, it works for other people, but it just won't work for them. So you can go from being an incredibly shy person to being a really confident person. And like I said, it can be through doing a lot of exposure therapy and desensitization training. And of course, you know, if you want to get more confident with, with women, then you've got to be going out and talking to lots of women, maybe not even necessarily through doing cold approaching on the street, but certainly through social environments as well. So. To make things even more interesting for you, I want to completely shift how you think about this scale, that perhaps maybe being confident isn't about a scale. It isn't about being introverted or extroverted and putting your, a label on yourself. That means that you have to identify as that and you have to stay as that for the rest of your life. Okay, so you've got as well, I've, I've just uh, put to, I found two pictures, just a, a guy who's sort of like really fed up with his life and he's clearly probably not going to change. And then you've got a guy very similar looking and he's a lot more confident. And I think also to add what does make it even more interesting is that the more confidence you get, then the uh, the less color you become, you become more black and white rather than being in a multicolor uh, there as well. But let's shift the perspective here what if again 
being introverted and extroverted wasn't a scale that you were somewhere on the scale, but instead, maybe it was more of a power bar. So, okay, I'm going to introduce you to a new concept. And okay, I got a little bit carried away with uh, making this page, uh, but I wanted to emphasize that this really important thing that, you know, when you are working on your shyness to be more confident, I want you to kind of think about this confidence as a power bar or a power meter kind of like the same thing that you'd expect if you were playing maybe a computer game where when you're button bashing you're filling up that power bar until you get to some like ultimate move by filling your bar up to max um and i, I did i kind of got a bit i had you can tell i had a lot of fun with uh putting this page together and in fact i even toned it down before I was actually, when I was doing my research for the pictures, I was actually also thinking of like one side putting all the Street Fighter 4 characters and on the other side putting like the Mortal Kombat characters. Um, but I thought like, no, that's going to be a little bit too much here and probably also a bit too distracting as well. So um, I want you to consider instead that the, uh, the shyness that you've got is fitted instead into this power meter. And the more you go out and talk to people, you are charging that up. You are giving yourself these power points that then moves you into a much more confident phase. So if I just uh, just highlight this, so perhaps first of all, you know, you are a really shy person. You're not going out. You're not talking to people. You're going to be more... Uh, well, your your power bar is going to be pretty empty. You're going to be sort of down at the bottom. You're only going to have a little bit of energy there. But then you go out and you start talking to people, even if it's something as simple as asking for directions, giving compliments, uh, even asking staff questions, maybe about products and services and stuff, whatever it is. But just putting yourself out there to be sociable might then suddenly fill the meter up just that little bit more. And then you start feeling that flow state. You start feeling more comfortable and confident in your own skin. And when you're talking to people, maybe you also have a bit more uh, conviction in how you're speaking and even challenging those limiting beliefs. They might not be as much of a bother for you as well. So you carry on talking to people and suddenly that bar fills up even more. You now feel even more confident, even more sociable. You might be a bit more daring in your conversations by, you know, taking the mick out of someone or teasing someone and stuff as well. And then that feeds giving you even more points until you're in that full on flow state where you are incredibly confident and you aren't really thinking about any of your limiting beliefs as well. Now, if let's say you are going out and constantly practicing cold approaching, like with what my client had experienced the other week, when you're talking to people, your energy is going to go up and down. It's a bit like a roller coaster. It's one moment you're going to be really in the mood to talk to people the next you're going to feel quite depleted. So in this, you're going to be really up for talking to people. And then the next moment, you're going to feel depleted. Then you might need to have a break and have some food, have some water that might fill you up again. Then you might have a couple more conversations and they might go really well. And then it goes up again and you feel great. And then you might end up talking to someone who was just in a really bad mood and then it brings you all the back down, all the way back down again. And you might just constantly experience this constant flux of up and down with your energy, feeling sociable and then feeling unsociable, feeling in the mood to talk to people and not in the mood to talk to people. But think about it like that. Think about how your shyness is and are you really putting yourself out there enough to be more confident and to work on your uh, the sociable side of yourself? And you'll find, I think if you can shift your way of thinking into your confidence is more about a power meter, then it, I think, changes the way in how you behave with interacting with people. And it gets you thinking like, okay, well, look, I'm not feeling very sociable right now. If I want to be more sociable, then I've got to go and be more sociable. Or if I want to sort of, I'm, I'm kind of tired being really sociable. I want to relax. I want to switch off. Then 
I need to stay away from people. And, and in fact, actually, that leads on to the next thing I'm going to talk about, which is the uh, the energy side of things. Not not in a woo woo way, but guys will also say like, well, you know, people who are introverted, they like you know being on their own. They like that that space. Whereas people who are extroverted, they get their energy from being very sociable with people. So does that mean that if I'm shifting from being introverted to extroverted, that same experience is going to change for me? Well, to be honest, everyone I think that I've met hasn't changed. Like if you're someone who's very introverted and you're kind of shifting yourself to be more confident and be more sociable, then you are still very likely to be that same kind of guy who much prefers to switch off by having alone time. And same with if you are someone who is maybe always uh, incredibly extroverted, then, you know, it's not going to be a case of like you get your energy by having all that time on your own. It's going to be a case that you still get your energy from being around other people. So it's an interesting one, at least with everything that I've seen. It's probably a case by case thing, but that is what I have seen play out with most people. So In summary, I want you to kind of lose this idea that being extroverted and introverted is on a scale, that you aren't just somewhere on this scale and that is that and you can't move. If you're introverted, you can only be introverted and you can never be extroverted or more sociable. It's ridiculous to think that. But instead, consider that it's more of a power meter, that the more you go out and the more sociable you are, the more you are going to fill up this meter. Hopefully you're not going to do some special attack at the end of it. Uh, I mean, it would have been hilarious if I'd have uh, had some Mortal Kombat characters on here and then uh, mentioned about the idea of like you fill that meter up and then you maybe do a fatality on someone that you're attracted to. Just, yeah, don't do that. Um, But instead, just consider that this power meter, the more you put yourself out there, the more you end up talking to people, the more confident you are going to be and ha- and that's going to shift you from being a really shy person into a much more confident person and if you want to also keep that energy up you need to go back out and talk to more people you might find that this bar might over time slightly deplete so i'll even reference it here it might slowly end up depleting but as long as you're going out and practicing talking to people it will fill back up again okay so i really hope you enjoyed this video if you can please like the video and subscribe to the channel i'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below of what you thought of this video and what do you do to help you shift yourself from being very introverted to extroverted and if you need any help with your journey with overcoming your social anxiety and even your approach anxiety as well because let's face it, it really is just social anxiety. It's just a term that's been made up in the uh, the dating industry. Then by all means, do check out my website, have a look at the services that I offer. And also, if you're open to the idea, reach out to me for a complimentary client assessment and I can work out where you're at and hopefully give you a bit of feedback and guidance in what sort of steps I reckon you should do next if you want to work on your confidence especially in the uh, the dating scene so i've been dan that dating anxiety guy and thank you very much for watching